the Lord to all the viewers in the name of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Today's video is in response to Zakir Naik, uh, which he has spoken about divers both in Quran and Bible. Please watch the video of Zakir Naik. At the time of Moses, it was said that if you want to give divorce, give a bill of divorce. That's it. But Jesus Christ, please be upon him, says that you shall not give bill of divorce until your wife sleeps with somebody else. That means previously, at the time of Moses, divorce was allowed. To give a divorce, you give a bill of divorce. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a messenger of God, comes and changes the law. Now that you have watched the video of Zakir Naik, I have three challenges in what he has explained. First thing, his scripture quotation of Matthew 5 is totally different than the context of divorce in the Bible. Second thing, that Moses allowed in the Old Testament, Jesus came and changed in the New Testament. The problem here is, Zakir Naik doesn't have a holistic understanding of the Bible. That's the reason he has falsely interpreted the entire concept of divorce in the Bible. Before getting into the Bible, what speaks about divorce, let me explain what the Quran speaks about the divorce. So if a man wants to marry, a second or third or fourth woman, Surah 4.3, then you don't need to go and tell your wife that you are getting married to a second or third or fourth woman. There is only one condition. When a person is going to marry a second woman, he is supposed to have it written with the first woman in the form of Sharia, which is a secret covenant between a man and woman that he is not going to marry second, third or fourth woman. If he doesn't have that secret covenant with the first wife, then he has the flexibility to go and marry second, third and fourth, the two, without telling the first wife, without telling the second wife, like that. So the danger and the challenge what you tend to see here in Islam is, imagine the woman did not have a secret covenant with the man before getting married as part of the Sharia. Then if she has four children, the man tends to go and marry second, third and fourth and each having four children. Imagine then the situation of all these four women and uh, whatever amount of children, 10 or 14 children, what should be the state of these people in context to their daily maintenance, daily sustenance? The man is going and having multiple marriages, but the women and the children are struggling just because of the one mistake that the woman did not had the secret covenant written as part of the Sharia during uh, their first wedding. They are gone case. That's the situation of Quran. But if you see the context of Bible, Jesus in Matthew 19, if you go and read from verse 4 to 9, you clearly see that Jesus very clearly says, it is only one marriage. God of the Bible doesn't allow to marry two. Jesus explicitly says that it is only one man, one woman to constitute to become wife. Outside the marriage it is called as adultery. When you have one man and two women, the second woman is considered as adultery. That is what, if you see the example when a Farsi uh, tries to come and ask Jesus, in the context of the divorce, Jesus says it is only one marriage. Then when the Farsis tend to ask, why did Moses allow, Jesus tend to tell, it is because the hardened heart of the you people. It was never like that since beginning. So since beginning when Jesus is speaking about Genesis 2 in the context of Adam and Eve itself in Genesis 2.30 you tend to see a man will leave his parents and will be united to his wife and they both become one flesh. Though you tend to see two physical bodies, they, God sees them as one flesh. And in fact, again, in Matthew 19 itself, Jesus himself says, Whom God has united, how can man separate? That means marriage is a unification between male and female by God. It is not man who is deciding to marry a woman. It is God's plan. So how can a man separate and give a divorce when God has united them? 
that is what is the greatness of the Bible and you also tend to see it in Matthew 5 27 to 28 if you see a woman and lust with your eyes you have already committed the adultery that means the great prominence is given in the context of marriage in Bible Bible treats women with utmost respect and do not allow divorce and the second thing God of the Bible do not allow second marriage God of the Bible only says wife in the context of one man, one woman. God of the Bible sees as one flesh in spite of having two physical bodies in the context of marriage in Bible. When God has united them, how can man separate? That means it is not the God's will that man is separated with his wife. And one last thing, you see this in Ephesians 5.32 is marriage is symbolic to the future marriage which is going to happen between church and Christ which is a spiritual thing did you see what a great respect Bible tends to give to the marriage and women that women doesn't need to suffer with their uh, livelihood and the children when the man doesn't tell to the wife and goes on marriage with other second, third or fourth women as part of Surah 4.3 then what big challenge it is. So I hope you have understood and now my point to Zakir Naik is if he doesn't have a holistic understanding of the Bible then he needs to introspect, understand and then come and speak about any particular faith otherwise he is unnecessary defaming and giving a false witnessing and false guidance to the people without having a holistic and a biblical understanding of a particular topic or theme i hope you have liked this video thank you so much for watching please subscribe to this video and share it to uh, others in your churches and in your neighborhood so that others are blessed thank you so much god bless you